This is August 2018. We've come to Ash today to visit Steve Appleby, who's enjoyed a fantastic 2018 racing season. Morning, Steve. Morning, Keith. Not a bad one, mate, is it? A bit cloudy, but uh, raceable. Yeah, you know all about clouds, don't you? <laughs> I certainly do. <laughs> we go back a, lot, a few years, mate. Certainly do. We. Yeah. Uh, well, Convoy was uh, where we really got together, yeah. it's London South East Classic Club. All those yeah. years ago, yeah. So, how long have you been in the sport? Must be 40 odd years. Yeah. Lovely. Wouldn't be without it. Pigeons, no. No. So, how'd you start up? Well, I used to keep pigeons uh, <coughs> at my grandfather's uh, house. He had a, an old carriage, a uh, railway carriage at the bottom of the garden, and he said I could use it. And so I got some pigeons, kept them in there, and that's how it all began. Yeah. So what sort of racing do you prefer? I prefer, obviously, um, middle distance. I'm not into distance racing. No. Um, short distance and middle distance. You like the old federation? Well, federation and the middle distance with the BICC. Yeah. So this is your good pigeon blue diamond in Steve? Yes, certainly is. What is she? Well, it's, uh, all I can tell you, it comes down from Waterhouse Pigeons. Um, and she's just, we've been a bit lucky with the breeding and the, the pair produced um, very good pigeons and she was uh, one of the top ones. Yeah, what's she won? Very consistent on the road, one or two club cards, but nothing until she won the Fed really. Yeah, that's for the three boulders. That's right, yeah. yeah where was that from? Kingsdown. Yeah. Lovely pigeon. So you've had a fantastic season this year, Steve, well, 2018. It's certainly been the best for some time now. We've uh, done very well in the club. Uh, we've had four firsts and five seconds uh, and the birds have just come well and, and I put it down to the base strain of being a Waterhouse uh, yeah. big pigeons. Done well in the Federation. Yeah, we've taken several Federation cards. I've got one particular pigeon that's been 7th fed, 12th fed and 23rd fed, two firsts and a second. That's a Skymaster. Yeah. Lovely pigeon, and uh, hopefully he's going to do well next year as a two-year-old. Yeah. What's one or two of your best performances through the years? Well, when we go back, I suppose the best pigeon it, I ever had was a pigeon called Sky Queen. She was never out of the first 20 in any national or classic race. Her, her best position being a single entry in the Saints National with 500, uh, sorry, 5,800 pigeons competing, and she was fourth open second section in a northeast wind. Yeah, what family was she? She was a bush shark, the old Corbett bush shark. Yeah, she's a beautiful hen too, wasn't she? She was a lovely hen, yeah. Yeah. So, um, what system do you race your birds on? Uh, celibate. Yeah? Yeah, we don't, I don't pair them up, they race to the love of their home and their box. Yeah. Do you pair them up eventually, do have a baby in the course yeah, of the year? Yeah, at the end of the season they're rewarded by, I do allow them to pair up and raise a youngster. Yeah. So what's your feed? Normal uh, a mixture of, uh, it's called um, countrywide, um, Premier Gold, it's uh, peas, beans, pe uh, maize, tares and s some small grain, grain and it's an all-round, yeah. all-purpose. Uh, yeah. Do you break down? No, it's all I feed all the time. Yeah. Do you train the birds? The, uh, the old birds? Yeah. What wants to start racing? No, there's no training wants to no, start racing. Just fly out for an hour each day or Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Do you show the ends and cocks on a, on a Friday? Yep, I let the let them run together as they're not paired up, and uh, they do go to each other. And uh, there's some obviously attraction, and uh, they um, get the incentive that let's get home and get get one, get find a mate. One's not, yeah. Another nice pigeon, Stevie. What's this one? Yeah, this is Sky Master. He uh, has two firsts this year and uh, a second in the club, and every position those positions he's taken a fed. Uh, he was 7th fed, 12th fed and 23rd fed. Yeah, beautiful pigeon. Isn't it another celibate pigeon? Yes, it is a celibate cock and he's only a yearling and next year he'll go to the uh, Bic mm -hmm. across the water. What firm is he? Again, it's the, water, the old Waterhouse strain, but this one is crossed with uh, one from Russell Ayres, my next door neighbour. Yeah. He kindly gave me a cock bird and the, the, the pairing proved successful and he's uh, the business, I have to say that. This is Steve's very smart setup here at Ash. His main racing loft is four sections, 20 foot long, and in the corner, he's got a small stock loft. This is the scene inside Steve's racing hen section. 
had kept in box perches, which they raced to. Let's talk about the young birds now, Steve. How many young birds do you breed each season to race? 20. Yeah. And I find that uh, normally I'm left with about half of them. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I just, I've got 15 left. Yeah. Um, as you know, young bird racing uh, is uh, quite a lot of losses, and uh, if I end up with 10, I'll be quite happy. Yeah. So, uh, how far do you train your babies? Train them to about 30 miles, no further. Yeah. I find that's quite adequate and in preparation, obviously, for the Federation races. Yeah, so how many races do they have? Do they go right through the season? They will, yeah, not all of them. Um, yeah. I'm pretty selective. I'll probably t send a team of about six or eight, but no more, and I find that's quite adequate. Yeah. What do you feed them on? Normal mix. Um, I do give them a little bit of uh, homer form, um, just as a tidbit. But other than that, it's the normal corn that the old birds get. Yeah. How about darkness? No, I don't race darkness. Just, um, I'm yeah. not a believer in darkness. Um, just race them to the perch? Just to the perch, yeah. Do you let them pair up? Well, if they want to pair up, they can. Um, I don't stop them. Um, and if they lay in the corner, well, that's that's down, down yeah. to them. And, a bit uh, of incentive. It does obviously give them a bit mm. of incentive. Do you yeah. enjoy young bird racing? I certainly do. I think when you see them fold out the sky and they really wind in, it's real excitement for the uh, for the end, end of the race. This is a scene inside Steve's young bird section. They just raced the box perches, and these few babies have had three races so far this season. And he's won a young bird race. So how many stock pigeons you keep in, Steve? Well, there's actually six pairs. Uh, as you can see, there are six boxes, yeah. and uh, f four of the cocks are Waterhouse, and two of them, the other two, are crosses between Waterhouse and my next door neighbour, who's kindly gifted me a pair of stock cocks. Yeah. Uh, and those six cocks are uh, paired up with the Waterhouse pigeons, and I breed about 20 youngsters. Yeah, when did you pair them up? Pair up normally at the beginning of uh, February, um, and I find that's pl plenty early enough. Yeah. What do you look for when you bring a stuck bird in then? Well, obviously the background of the pigeon and uh, the family, and hopefully the um, bloodlines that go back to winning pigeons. It's the best you can do. Yeah. You haven't got a particular type you like? Not really, no. It's, it's all got the yeah. just, just as long as they come out of the sky. <laughs> and win. <laughs> and win, yeah. Well, this is where I stand on race days. And Russell's next door, and we're looking to the sky and wondering who's going to get the pigeon first. You lost a back to back, haven't you? You and Russell is? Almost. Well, it is. And yeah. uh, it's certainly very competitive on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Well, so the old fence is nice and old, so you can't hit one another. No, no, they can't reach each other. <laughs> well, Steve, as I previously said, we've been good friends for a lot of years now. Tell us a little bit about your race advising. Well, I've been race advising 30 years. A good sound background in, in weather and how it works is essential. Yeah. Understanding pressure charts, how systems work, and stand you in good stead. And uh, when you're advising uh, organisations, the responsibility is really heavy and uh, you have to get it right because otherwise uh, it, it can be very sad for the fanciers if they uh, don't uh, have their pigeons back home. So I say convoying and race advising must be the most responsible jobs in pigeon racing. Well it is because that, opinion, yeah. the, the success of the race depends upon it. Yeah, we had nine good years together mate when I was convoying yep. for London South East Classic. Yep. And can say that out of those nine years, every race was a success. Okay, yeah. there were two or three difficult ones, but we never had a poor race. No, too cute, mate, weren't we? We, un we understood it. And we <laughs> cared. And we certainly did. That's it, mate. So, who do you race advice for now? Well, mainly the BICC um, is my main club, and a couple of other federations. But I have cut back on it quite a lot because uh, I found it's. Uh, too much uh, responsibility and I couldn't enjoy my pigeons yes, the same, um, yeah. and therefore uh, I'm in the position I Detrimental am now. Detrimental to your pigeon racing. It is yeah, really. Yeah. All right Stephen, thank you very much for having me around again to see your birds today, it's been a great pleasure. Well it's been a pleasure meeting you Keith and thanks for coming. <laughs>